Survivor Series has been one of my favorite WWE pay-per-views since 2016. Raw vs. SmackDown, that gets me hyped. But this year, was I feeling it? I don't know, the build-up has not been as good as previous years. What's up guys, WSC Stage Creator back again with another video and today I'll be reviewing Survivor Series 2021. This show was solid, it was alright, the build-up going into it, the hype was just not there for me man, I don't know what it was, it was just like, it just didn't hit the same as previous years. It was solid, but again with Survivor Series, this has been the case for years now. It's never really eventful. Nothing really eventful happened here. No storylines would progress that much. It's just champion versus champion, Raw versus SmackDown. And one of the problems with Raw versus SmackDown is there's really no brand identity. They did a draft like a month ago. Seth Rollins was a SmackDown superstar. Now he's a Raw superstar and he won it for the Raw team. Becky Lynch was just a SmackDown superstar. Now she's a Raw women's champion. Charlotte was just a Raw women's champion. Now she's SmackDown women's champion. There's no brand identity here, so you don't really care who's on whose side, you know? That's why I think they should do the night after WrestleMania, do the draft there, then you can kind of build up the identity of the brands with the rosters. That'll make things a whole lot better. But getting into the show, we had a lot of screwy finishes and just, oh my God, the lazy booking, trying to protect people. We're gonna get into all that right here. Starting off with the first match on the kickoff show, it was Damian Priest versus Shinsuke Nakamura, champion versus champion. I can't believe they put this on the kickoff show. Pretty solid match here, but I understand with the finish that they were going for, why they put it on the kickoff show. And this match had no build whatsoever to it, so I guess there wasn't as much interest there, but it's a pretty cool match. And these guys did pretty good in the match. Damian Priest got this new character where it's like one half of him is like, evil and he like can't control his rage and then the other side is good it's heavenly it's like the Damien is the evil side and the priest is the good side of him so it's like he's got a kind of a split personality kind of good that they're giving him a proper gimmick instead of the archer of infamy that's not really a gimmick they never really explored who he was so I'm glad they kind of did that I don't like that they took away his music but it is what it is Nakamura has been positioned really well in WWE for years I think he's great and as a babyface I love him and Rick Boogs with him Man, Boogs is over. He's got the crowd singing like his Freddie Mercury. That is awesome. This match ultimately came to a close when Damian Priest had the Hell's Gate on Shinsuke Nakamura. He was fading out. He was about to lose there, but Rick Boogs revived him with the guitar, shredding it, shredding the guitar, gets him up. Damian Priest was not happy. He was not happy that Rick Boogs kept distracting him with the guitar, helping out Shinsuke Nakamura. He went out and he broke the guitar. He broke Rick Boog's guitar. That was pretty cool, but man, you never do that. Don't break somebody's guitar, that's not nice. And then the Damien came out of Damien Priest and he got one of the pieces of the guitar and he hit Shinsuke Nakamura and a DQ finish. And this is just one part of the night that really started the trend. And this is one of my problems with WWE. They're so focused on how do we protect this guy? We book these two guys in a match, but we don't want one guy to look weak. We don't want him to lose. So Damian Priest had to lose to Shinsuke Nakamura via DQ because I don't know, Shinsuke Nakamura, who's almost a Grand Slam champion, can't beat Damian Priest clean. That's kind of ridiculous, come on now. Like I'm all for protecting both guys here, but DQ finish, come on now. Shinsuke Nakamura could just beat him clean, it's fine. And Nakamura was over here, they were chanting for him more than Damien Priest, and Damien Priest is from New York, so that's pretty interesting. Then we got to the main show, Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair, champion versus champion, and I thought going into it, like we've seen this match so many times between these two, but this was different. This had a lot of animosity going into it. Apparently they hate each other, in real life and backstage and there's some beef there and it was pretty noticeable in this match and this match was pretty awesome but again stupid finishes WWE with their roll-ups every time they everybody wins with a roll-up in WWE is getting annoying here's what happened Charlotte Flair went for a roll-up to hold the ropes and try to cheat on Becky Lynch but she couldn't get it done the referee caught her there she got caught with a hand in the cookie jar and then Becky Lynch rolls her up holds the ropes, referee didn't catch her, and Becky Lynch wins here. I guess Charlotte Flair couldn't sweet talk her way into winning this match to Vince McMahon, but Becky Lynch wins this match, and I think most people expected it. But kind of a lame way to end this great match to start the show. Also, side note, Becky with the red gear looking awesome. Then we had the men five on five Survivor Series match, Raw versus SmackDown, a match that I always get hyped about, and this was a pretty fun match, not one of the best five on five matches. Going into it, I thought Team Raw had the strongest team. They had 
Bobby Lashley, Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Austin Theory, Finn Balor, great team there, mostly filled up with heels, but I thought SmackDown had it in the bag. I thought Jeff Hardy, Drew McIntyre, especially thought Drew McIntyre was gonna get the W here, but surprisingly not. Before we talk about the match, we gotta talk about the drip. The drip god Seth Rollins had some awesome gear on here and also Bobby Lashley busted out the colors here. He decided to not rock with the black. Man was dripped, man, with the red. The red gear, oh, that was beautiful. We need a figure of that. So to start off the match, we had Kevin Owens. He walked out on the team. I guess they just wanted to protect him again. Again, them trying to protect him. And look, he's a little busted open over here. Little preview of what's to come at the Rumble. But Kevin Owens, he walked out on his team. I guess now that he's a heel, he doesn't care to work with anybody. And he just walked out of there protecting himself from a pinfall loss. I guess they just wanted Seth Rollins to get all the spotlight here. Then the next elimination came when Corbin, happy Corbin wasn't so happy, Finn Balor, bang, coup de gras, Finn Balor eliminates Corbin. Then the almighty Bobby Lashley, former WWE champion, came in there and he absolutely destroyed King Woods. And I thought King Woods was getting a push. I thought he was gonna face Roman Reigns for the title and maybe he still will, but he got destroyed by Lashley, hurt locked the hell out of him, tossed him out of there, bang, he was eliminated by the almighty and I did not see that coming. I thought he'd be one of the last survivors. And then a thing that genuinely shocked me, Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley, old rivals here, they both got counted out in this match. God damn it, WWE, what are you doing with all these count outs and these roll ups? God, making my head explode. These two big men got counted out, gotta protect him, can't beat him with the pinfall. I'm sick of it. Then Finn Balor got the brogue kick by Sheamus. Sheamus eliminates Balor. And then Sheamus and Jeff Hardy, who were like in a feud last year, they hated each other. They working together, doing the 10 beats, doing the poetry in motion together. And then Sheamus ends up getting eliminated by Austin Theory. Newcomer Austin Theory, who people say I look like Austin Theory. The guy's a handsome man. Thank you for the compliment. But they eliminated Sheamus with Austin Theory. Good to see him getting a spotlight here. And then Sheamus... Just, he hits him, he hits him, and then Sheamus like, I'm out of here, man. Peace. He hits his own teammate, and then Austin Theory and Seth Rollins left on Jeff Hardy. Austin Theory gets eliminated, Swanton Bomb, by Jeff Hardy, and then it's just these two. Seth Rollins and Jeff Hardy together in the end, and they had me going. They had me going thinking that Jeff Hardy was going to be the sole survivor, and that he was going to beat Rollins here, and then he was going to go on and then face Roman Reigns for the title at WWE Day 1. Possibly that may be the case still, but he goes up. He goes up for the Swanton Bomb, knees up by Rollins, stomp, one, two, three, and it absolutely shattered me, but the WSC Hardcore Champion, Reign Supreme here at Survivor Series, picks up the W for Team Raw, and will he do the same in the Hardcore Royal Rumble? It's gonna get wild up in here. And while it was also a night of roll-ups and screwy finishes and count-outs, it was also a night of promotions and advertisements, and that's what we got with Roman Reigns and Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon had this egg, this egg from the movie Red Notice, Cleopatra his egg and he had it backstage and then it got stolen later in the night and he showed it to Roman Reigns because he got it from The Rock or something. I don't know. They were just shilling this thing because they got to promote Red Notice for some reason on the show. Let me know if I should check that out. I'm kind of sick of Ryan Reynolds' stick. It just seems like a dumb blockbuster movie, but let me know if I should watch it. But yeah, someone stole the egg and I guess that's just what happened in the movie. Rock and Ryan Reynolds steal the egg, so I don't think that's going to mean anything. I don't expect The Rock to show up tomorrow. If he's not going to show up at Survivor Series, why would he show up tomorrow? Don't get your hopes up. WrestleMania Hollywood, Rock versus Roman. That's what's going to happen and I hope to be there. And then we had a Pizza Hut Battle Royal, basically. This like a big promotion for Pizza Hut and a Battle Royal celebrating The Rock 25 years. And it was pretty obvious who was going to win this. You have a seven foot giant Amas in this match. I thought AJ Styles or Amas would win this and Amas does win this. And AJ Styles got eliminated by, he was taunting Aziz outside and then Aziz dragged him over the top rope. Then Amas was trying to save AJ. They were having a tug of war for AJ Styles. Then somebody hits Amas and then Amas loses his grip. AJ Styles gets eliminated, but Amas, he just destroys everyone and, and he wins. And then I guess he was rewarded with pizza, but then somebody stole his pizza and then, oh, oh God, forget about it. It was just a big promotion anyways, but Amas wins a battle royal as he should. Then we got the Usos 
versus RK Bro, and it was a champions versus champions match. And on paper, this sounds awesome, man. Like I could do some good stuff with this, but they just did no build with this match, and there was really nothing going on with this. Maybe it would have been better if it started the show, but the one good thing about it was the RKO from out of nowhere, Randy Orton always delivering with them sweet RKOs, and one of the Usos, I don't know which Uso it was, one of the Usos goes up to the top rope, Uso splash onto Riddle, and he does connect, but in midair he got caught with the RKO, and RK Bro wins this match, and it's good to see that RK Bro won this match. I thought the Usos was gonna win, but RK Bro does win this match. And shout out to Randy Orton, killing it for years. The most pay-per-view matches sets the record in history. Congrats to the man Randy Orton. Women's traditional five on five elimination match. Nothing special here, man. I just did not like this at all. Had no no connection to this whatsoever. Bianca Belair wins, keeping her strong. I thought it would have been nice to showcase Rhea Ripley, have her stay strong. Maybe she goes on to win the Royal Rumble. A little bit of long-term booking, uh, elevating her a little bit. I don't know, but I guess Bianca did need the win. Sasha Banks got eliminated by count out. Count outs, what is going on? It was three on one for Bianca. She overcomes the odds, gets the win. Love Bianca, glad to see her win. Then we got to the main event and one thing with this Survivor Series that also irked me a little bit is like they stopped keeping score. It's Raw versus SmackDown, they've done it for so many years and they kept score every year to make every match feel special and like it contributed to something and then they don't count the matches at all. And Raw absolutely destroyed SmackDown. Raw, 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 SmackDown. Raw. Raw destroyed SmackDown. That's probably why they didn't keep score, but it would have been nice if you kept score. Then we got the head of the table, Roman Reigns versus Big E, the WWE Champion, Universal Champion, Champion versus Champion match. And I don't know, this just wasn't like anything that special to me. Big E, I love Big E. I think he's cool, but I just don't buy him as WWE Champion. I don't know. He... He just lacks something as a singles guy. I still see him as the New Day guy. I still see him as the comedy guy. It's been so many years. He's been pinned in matches, not taken seriously, Do doing all this comedy stuff. I just do not take him that seriously here. And I don't know, something needs to change with him. Big E loses to Roman Reigns here. Solid matchup. Nothing all too special. Again, the build to this matchup, they barely built it. I feel like the Brock Lesnar matches of previous Survivor Series have been way better than uh, the last two years with Roman Reigns in it. But Roman Reigns, the one. Roman Reigns beats Big E, and what happened was Big E, who has had knee surgery in the past, he injured his knee in this match, Roman Reigns was targeting it, he went for the big ending, Reigns gets out, bang, stomp right to the back of the knee, hits a spear, second spear of the match, Big Dog wins, head of the table, what did you expect? The head of the table is the man right now. He's killing it. This was a right, nothing too special. This Survivor Series, again, like I said, Survivor Series are not very eventful. Like, they're good shows, Champions vs. Champions, all that, Raw vs. SmackDown, but no storyline to really progress here. And I'm just, I'm just waiting for the Royal Rumble. Day one, don't even know if I'll review that unless something cool happened to that show. But Royal Rumble, I'm super hyped for, and I've got my own Royal Rumble coming up. Royal Rumble, the hardcore Royal Rumble, Seth Rollins defending his championship against 29 other superstars. It's gonna be epic this Saturday, Saturday the 27th of November. Hopefully I can get it done. It's still a lot of work, but I really wanna get it out to you guys. I've been working really hard, the longest video I've ever made. So thank you guys for watching this video. Catch you on the next one. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you guys on the next video the one.